Go. One, two, three, four. Why do people like lo-fi? It's kind of a strange stylistic choice when you take a look at it from a step back. In case you didn't know, the word fidelity with respect to music just means the recording or reproduction quality. When recording and producing music, until around the 1980s, it was thought that songs should have as high a fidelity as possible. This was, and often still is, seen as a sign of their quality and polish because no one wants their song to sound like My Diamonds! However, much like the advent of Impressionism in response to the invention of photography, the production of music is now much more accessible even for amateurs, so low fidelity has often become an intentional stylistic choice among many artists. In this emergence lies the crux of the question. Why listen to music made with intentional defects in it? Would it not make more sense to make the music sound like an incredibly accurate recreation of what is being recorded? Well, ironically, to some people, low fidelity might make a track sound like a more accurate recreation instead of a less accurate one. Something interesting about recorded music, as opposed to, say, a live performance, is that an artist has as many takes as possible to get it just right. Low fidelity encapsulates flaws created by the artists themselves, like starting cues before a recording or discussion after it's over. You watch your back. That's okay. It can include small comments, mistakes, or improvisation, which is a trait it can share with live performances. These inclusions might deviate from a completely ideal performance of a piece of music but it also adds a sense of realism to the recording. Instead of plastic polish, intentionally leaving in these additions can create an atmosphere of actually being there with the group. Something as simple as a countin can create a picture of the band in the booth, and suddenly it feels more like real people made this music, instead of an artificial approximation of a person, stitched together from hundreds of takes. It makes sense why it calls up this image too, Often, tracks with low fidelity were created by amateur DIY artists working in their bedroom or garage. These artists weren't stylistically corrupted by the influence of their label or fanbase, and just create music they're passionate about with the tools they have access to, which is easy to romanticize. Whether you are one of these artists, or just trying to capture the aesthetic, this feeling can add the appeal of raw realism, which humanizes a track in a way that high fidelity just can't. And speaking of romanticization, low fidelity can be appealing because of its ability to create a deep sense of sentimentality. Artifacting from old technologies, static, and cheap recording equipment harkens back to music from earlier decades, played on ancient car radios or your childhood friend's garage sale boombox. For obvious reasons, this can help create a feeling of longing for times gone by. Some of the most popular low fidelity music in current years is lo-fi hip-hop, which uses low production fidelity in addition to sampling of older music and other media to cultivate an aesthetic of nostalgia. Oftentimes, these samples are intentionally treated with additional distortion beyond their initial recording to age them, and help create the intended emotion. It's easy to understand the desire to return to simpler times, and tune out the wide world to relax for a little in an idealized version of the past. Back when you didn't have many worries outside of playing Game Boy, watching cartoons, or spending a lazy afternoon with your ex. Before they left you. Lo-fi hip-hop uses low-fidelity masterfully to create this type of atmospheric music, which definitely explains its popularity amid the recent cultural surge in sentimentality over the last couple of years. Beyond images low fidelity conjures up, however, it also has been used for the specific sound itself. Many artists seek out a veneer of low fidelity due to its unique brand of distortion. Buzzy guitar and bass, analog warmth, and reverberation from audio feedback. Low fidelity can create a cushion that cuts down sharp and intense sounds, while still sounding really full. 
An often discussed album exemplifying these traits is Neutral Milk Hotels, which has achieved a dedicated fan base for decades despite its humble origins. The use of low fidelity in this album, though initially included out of a desire for distortion combined with limited means to afford equipment, has gone on to inspire many, many different artists and albums to seek out similar sounds. Low fidelity is more than just a detail added to conjure authenticity or nostalgia. It has appeal beyond just what it alludes to. Why heavier distortion sounds good to some is a hard thing to really explain, so it might be a topic to cover in the future, but it is a style that's sought after by a non-trivial number of people. Low fidelity has found itself utilized in many musical movements looking for the unique elements of the DIY sound, including garage rock, punk rock, various flavors of Indian alternative rock, folk, hip-hop, rap, and many more genres that I didn't read the Wikipedia pages for. It's out there, it's proven, and people like it. I like it. So if you're interested in making music, don't hesitate to go download a DAW. No matter what kind of artist you are, your production value is only something that holds you back if you allow it to. This has been Out of Characters, thanks for watching.